While the fighting in the Donbas still rages, there are fears about a fresh siege attempt on the Ukrainian city on the front line for nearly a decade. 50 kilometers south of the fierce fighting for Bakhmut, Russian troops are reported to have refocused efforts on the town of Avivka, which lies just a few miles north of Donetsk and the ruins of its airport fortress. Over the past day near Donetsk, Russian troops lost nearly two companies of manpower, having carried out 21 unsuccessful attacks on Ukrainian armed forces positions in the Abyevka and Marienka areas. The Ukrainian army now claims to have killed 164,910 Russian soldiers since the start of the war. Of these, they say 710 died in the 24 hours to Sunday morning. They also reported the destruction of eight Russian artillery systems since Saturday. Meanwhile, the 59th Separate Motorized Infantry Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine also destroyed the Russian invader's armored column. This was reported by the press service of the unit, publishing a corresponding video on its YouTube channel. In the Kherson direction, the missile and artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces destroyed at least the Strela-10 anti-aircraft missile complex, two artillery installations, a T-62 tank, and a mobile reconnaissance and control point of the Russian invaders. The press service of the Operations Command South in a report published this morning on the official page on the social network Facebook emphasizes that these are confirmed data. In addition, our defenders shot down the missile X-59 in the Beroslav district of the Kherson region. Another one of the same type hit the farmland. No loss or damage. They were fired upon by enemy Su-35 fighters. In combat throughout the last year of the war, armored vehicles were noisy death traps without the necessary support from infantry and other units. Reports of the failed Ukrainian attack on March 15 near the town of Novodanilivka in the Zaporizhia Oblast are a brutal example of just that. Video shows several armored vehicles burning in open terrain in the aftermath, with Russian accounts claiming to have repulsed the attack. Russian airstrikes targeted Avdiivka on March 17, causing a partial collapse of residential buildings. Infrared video also captured subsequent airstrikes on Ukrainian positions in the area. Elsewhere in the Donbass, another video shows a Ukrainian soldier briefly breaking cover to fire RPG-7s at Russian positions and a drone view of a failed Wagner PMC attack in the fog and gloom of the Bakhmut battlefield. Ukrainian anti-aircraft teams equipped with manned portable air defense systems MA and PABS, reportedly came under attack from Russian Su-25 Frogfoot attack aircraft in the region. Further south, Russia continued to fortify occupied Crimea in anticipation of a Ukrainian attack. A passerby takes video of ongoing construction on the west side of the Isthmus, south of the city of Ishan. More recently, Russian troops have occupied the fortress since annexing Crimea in 2014. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited the occupied Ukrainian city of Mariupol. The Kremlin said on Sunday, just days after the International Criminal Court issued a warrant for his arrest. During the visit, Putin was seen talking to residents and discussing plans for the reconstruction of Mariupol, including the airport. Mariupol was badly damaged during the Russian offensive, which destroyed the Azovstal steelworks, the last stronghold of Ukrainian forces in the city. Mariupol has been in Russian hands since last May and was the target of some of the most brutal attacks of the campaign. Ukrainian officials denounced Putin's trip as a cynical tactic. The Russian offensive on Mariupol begins on February 24, 2022, the first day of the invasion. The city was subjected to some of the war's worst atrocities. In March, airstrikes ripped through the city's maternity and children's hospitals. Russian officials claimed that the hospital was a justifiable military target, based on their unproven statements that Ukrainian military targets were on site and all the patients and medical staff had left. But footage circulating on social media shows the expectant mother being escorted out of the destroyed building amidst charred cars and debris. Meanwhile, 
the Ukrainian Air Force reportedly carried out 10 sorties on Russian troop concentrations and down the Iranian Mage Shade 136. Ukrainian troops attacked seven concentrations of Russian troops and military equipment. On March 17, Colonel General Oleksandr Sersky, commander of the Ukrainian army, said Russia had used all of its troops in Bakhmut in an attempt to completely encircle the city. Fighting took place to the north, east and south of Bakhmut, Sersky said. The Russian troops suffered heavy casualties and in some cases, withdrew without making any significant gains. Wagner Group founder Yevgeny Prigozhin claims that the Russian mercenary group intends to recruit as many as 30,000 by mid-May. The Kremlin-controlled mercenary group has been assisting the Russian military in its quest to seize the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut for months as Moscow tries to consolidate its grip over the whole of Donetsk Oblast about half of which it currently controls. However, the Institute for the Study of War, ISDO, said in its March 16 assessment that the Wagner Group attack on Bakhmut appears to be nearing a peak. On February 6, the Ukrainian parliament recognized Wagner as an international criminal organization and called on foreign governments to do the same. The U.S. Department of the Treasury designated the Wagner Group mercenaries a significant transnational criminal organization and imposed sanctions on its worldwide network of supporters on January 26. The Institute for the Study of War, a U.S. think tank, said in its latest Ukraine assessment that Russian troops were carrying out limited ground offensives along the kupiansk svetov krimina line. They also continued offensive operations in and around Bakhmut and on the outskirts of Donetsk city. The latest intelligence update from the UK Ministry of Defense says that earlier this month, officials in the Russian-controlled part of Zaporizhia Oblast declared Melitopol the oblast's capital. The UK Defense Ministry said the declaration was likely a tactical admission that Russia would control the much larger city of Zaporizhia in the near future. Zaporizhia, which has a population of about 700,000 people, is about 35 kilometers from the current front line. 